Hi, I'm Jason Grindstaff, and in today's video, what we're going to be talking about is this idea of psychological skills training. In one of our other videos, we really explored and, and teased out the idea of mental toughness. And in sport and exercise psychology, one of the ways that we believe that we can build mental toughness is practicing a set, specific set of skills. So, for example, we might help athletes uh, set more, more appropriate goals. We might help them develop imagery plans, help them manage uh, energy arousal states, um, through pre-performance routines. Uh, so there are a set of skills that we can help athletes develop that will eventually help them become more consistent, more mentally tough. And so in today's lecture, we're gonna look at uh, what are psychological, well, what are these psychological skills training programs? Uh, so more specifically, we have uh, three objectives uh, that we're gonna look at first. So we wanna be able to define uh, these PST programs, uh, psychological skills training. You might also hear them called mental skills training programs. Uh, we're gonna discuss some of, maybe some of the most common reasons why athletes and coaches neglect implementing these into their uh, practice and competition routines. Uh, we wanna be able to discuss the three phases or the three parts of a uh, mental skills training or psychological skills training program. And then our last three objectives that we wanna look at, uh, we wanna talk about this idea of skills versus methods of developing psychological skills. Um, and in the last two, we're really probably gonna cover a little bit more in class, but uh, for, for this chapter, we wanna explore how psychological skills training programs can be implemented in exercise, education, and other physical activity context, even outside of sport. Uh, and then finally, we wanna discuss some of the issues that are important and relevant to designing and implementing these programs. So first thing that we want to take a look at is what do we mean by psychological skills training? Essentially, our, our textbook uh, gives a pretty concise definition, but I think there's real, really three key components here. It is a set of mental skills, skills being the operative word there. Um, if this was a mental trait or a characteristic, individuals would, would essentially just be born with that disposition. But it being a mental skill, that means that we can train and it is adaptable over time. Uh, the second part of the definition is that it's systematic and consistently practiced, meaning that we have to go about a psychological skills training program. We have to have structure to it, and it has to be exercised, and it has to be developed consistently over time. You wouldn't go to a gym, for example, uh, one time expecting to walk out of the gym ripped and buff and have six-pack abs. Uh, so the same thing with becoming mentally strong or mentally tough. These programs have to be systematically and consistently practiced over time for athletes and other performers to get the most benefit from their program. And then thirdly, the, the last component of the definition is that it's the intended purpose is to enhance performance. And I'd probably add to that, not just enhance performance, but a lot of athletes have this kind of roller coaster effect, if you will, in their performance, those ups and downs. Really, it's meant to make performance more consistent over time and then hopefully enhance performance. And then finally, not just enhancing or making performance more consistent, but we want uh, athletes and other performers to enjoy uh, the sport experience, ex enjoy that experience uh, more so uh, just for self-satisfaction. Our next objective that we're gonna take a look at here is this idea of foundational skills. And what are we trying to help teach athletes? Um, Sports psychology researchers have kind of looked at this and said there are methods of developing these psychological skills and then there are foundational skills themselves. And we look at the core, the foundational skills that we're trying to teach athletes, there are really four of those. That being self-awareness, volition, self-esteem, and self-confidence. That self-awareness is really the idea of uh, how in tune are you with, it, with your own body? How in tune are you uh, with what your body needs? So for example, uh, we know that burnout and overtraining uh, is oftentimes caused by an Im a substantial imbalance between workload and, and rest. Um, there's certainly a perception component to that as well, but uh, athletes that are really in tune with their own body know when they're when they're kind of getting to that place of you know potentially being overtrained or burned out might need to back off a little bit. Those athletes are incredibly self-aware of what their body needs. The second foundational skill is volition, and volition is just this ten dollar word for um, motivation or the will to do. Uh, we hope 
um, sports psychology. It takes active steps in, in helping athletes enhance that volition, that drive, that desire to want to perform, to want to do well in their performance. Third is self-esteem. Self-esteem is a little bit different than, than self-confidence, which a lot of people kind of get uh, confused a little bit. Self-esteem is that really that internal dis disposition, that, uh, that foundation of how you see yourself. Do I see myself as, as, as a good person? Do I see myself as living a productive life and having a life worthwhile? versus self-confidence is that uh, situation specific. Some people might call this self-efficacy, if you will, but it's really situation specific and that believe that I can do a particular behavior. So for example, I might have high self-esteem that I'm a good person and at the same time have high self-confidence that I can hit a 90 mile an hour fastball uh, or by, vice versa. Maybe I have really poor self-esteem and I have low self-confidence that I, that, uh, that I wouldn't be able to hit a 90 mile an hour fastball. And those two aren't always necessarily related to one another, but in, in essence, those are the four foundational skills. And we also have these methods. And these are the, this is the idea, we have these particular methods that uh, sports psychology consultants might use to help build those four foundational skills. So uh, we might use concentration exercise, like a concentration grid. Or um, for arousal regulation, maybe a sports psychology consultant helps an athlete develop a pre-performance routine to kind of manage and modulate those, um, those energy states. Uh, might use uh, computer software programs uh, through biofeedback to help teach athletes um, what's going on with those physiological states like galvanic skin response or their heart rate or respiration to help teach self-awareness. So there's a variety of methods that uh, consultants might use to uh, really help foster these four foundational skills. Now, up to this point, uh, we've been painting a pretty, pretty picture of why, um, you know, how psychological skills training, the importance of them, how they might be used. Uh, but the reality is, is that many athletes, many coaches don't utilize these types of programs. And there's a variety of reasons. Uh, Here's, a, here's four, for example. Uh, one of the myths surrounding psychological skills training or these mental skills training programs is that it's only for problem athletes. Many times athletes think that, um, you know, if, if they were to work with a sports psychology consultant that they have a problem. And one of the things that I often tell athletes is that, um, you know, if your coach, I told you that in the off season, you need to just get a little bit quicker with, uh, you know, with your step or you need to work on your agility. Most athletes wouldn't think twice at all about working with a strength and conditioning coach to improve their speed, agility, and quickness. In essence, psychological skills training programs, I mean, when, they, when these athletes work with a sports psych consultant, we're really just mental coaches, mental training coaches. So they're not just for problem athletes. They're for athletes who are already good at what they are good at and just want to get better or more consistent at it. Um, that being said, the second is that for uh, these PST programs, that they're for only elite athletes, that only the athletes that are at the highest levels of their performance I benefit from these. And that's not necessarily true at all. Uh, all the way down to youth athletes or athletes with, with disabilities, uh, a variety of athletes can utilize these programs from recreational all the way up to elite. So almost any athlete can utilize these programs, not only to enhance their performance, but hopefully get more out of uh, participation and increase, as we mentioned earlier, self-satisfaction. Uh, third, many athletes think that these programs are a quick fix, that if they're struggling in their sport, if they just practice some imagery or utilize some biofeedback uh, or learn a pre-performance routine, that it's a quick fix. And it couldn't be any further from the truth. Sometimes, in some situations, by working on some of these skills, athletes will benefit rather quickly. But for the most part, in order to sustain those results, need, this needs to be practiced over time. And so a caveat to that with a quick fix, just as an athlete or a performer wouldn't change up something in their mechanics and then go right into competition the very next day and try to utilize a new technique, the same thing holds true for, for these psychological skills. Athletes shouldn't practice a new psychological skill and then expect to be able to implement that right away into competition. Um, 
and then finally that it's just not useful at all. Though not every psychological skill is going to be useful for every single athlete, all athletes can benefit from uh, more purposefully integrating these mental skills in, into their programs. Uh, there's even been a, a good bit of research looking at, uh, you know, what differentiates elite athletes from, uh, from non-elite, um, you know, those world-class athletes just from that national level. Um, and one of the things, or some of the things that have come out of this research that, you know, on these more successful athletes is that they tend to exhibit more of these psychological strengths, things like higher confidence. They tend to have better concentration and focus skills. They tend to have better self-regulation skills. Um, when it comes to the thoughts and the images that they have, they tend to have more positive and productive thoughts compared to negative or destructive thoughts. Um, and then they also exhibit more resiliency, determination, and commitment, especially when faced with setbacks. So if you're an athlete or you're a performer, uh, in any context, uh, and you wanted to integrate the psychological skills training into, into your routine, well, what would that look like? Uh, psychological skills training programs typically occur in three phases, with the first being an education phase. Now, athletes could read a book or they could work with a consultant who would first walk them through the, I mean, the process of increasing their awareness um, and what are those skills that the athlete would need to develop. So maybe it's, uh, kind of focus strategies, uh, goal setting strategies, th things like that. Uh, the second phase is that acquisition phase. So here is where the athlete's going to begin, begin developing and practicing with, with some of those skills outside the practice context, outside competition, they're just gonna begin developing in a low stress environment to begin acquiring those skills. And then third is the practice phase. And this is where the athlete starts taking them into practice and building those skills to the point that hopefully they become almost automatic where they can utilize them in competition. And the whole idea here is that eventually the athlete can kind of self-coach themselves on when they need to implement these strategies and what might be uh, most effective for them. So that's a little bit. So what we were able to accomplish in, in this video today is we really looked at uh, what are psychological skills training programs or these mental skills uh, that athletes are trying to work on. Uh, we looked at maybe some of the reasons why uh, coaches and athletes don't integrate them into, into practice and competition. And then finally, we wrapped up with uh, the kind of the phases of psychological skills training programs. Hopefully that was a bit of a primer on, on these uh, PST programs. I look forward to uh, future videos with you.